Welcome to this presentation from Pawpaw TV. We present an original lecture from Dr. Jerry McLaughlin, Professor Emeritus of Pharmacognosy at Purdue University and winner of the Tyler Prize. He is talking about his life's work. It is presented in nine parts. Since he is talking about a serious condition, we remind you that his remarks cannot be taken as medical advice, but are intended for educational purposes only. If you are viewing this from a country that does not allow this kind of teaching, please stop viewing now. And if you are sick, see a doctor. Maybe you can find one that speaks herbal medicine. And this just shows you the results. Uh, FO2 is a pawpaw extract. You see we're killing 50% of mosquito larvae down at one part per million. That is really potent. And also, blowfly larva killed 100% of them. And Canorhabditis elegans, or C. elegans, is a worm and we killed 100% of those worms. And so we knew that we had something that's biologically active, you know, against pests if nothing else. The next slide. So because of that activity, I decided when I first went to Nature Sunshine product, you know, four years ago, to make this into something that would be useful and get some cash flow coming. And the best insects I could think of to kill that would help people were head lice because head lice have become resistant to the pyrethrins that are in Nix and RID, okay? And so these head lice then we could kill. And so we made this pawpaw lice remover shampoo. And I thought, boy, you know, there's 16 million people. I did all the market research. 16 million people per year get head lice. Most of them kids and most of them little girls, okay? So I said, we're gonna help these people. You know, it didn't sell. I published a clinical paper in it. You know, I had four nurses do a study with a bunch of school kids. 100% effective, got rid of the head lice, no problem. Can't sell it. You know why? Because I put lice on the label. Nobody wants to buy anything that says lice, right? <laughs> There's a stigma against having lice. So I learned something. But at any rate, it's finally taken off a little bit. We're selling about 500 bottles a month right now, so it's, it's going to take off. And people are out of desperation using this. Next slide. And also, we put this into a product that kills worms because we killed Canorhabditis elegans and Merck tested 20 some of my compounds from pawpaw against Haemonchus contortus, which is a worm that dogs get. And it came in second to Ivermectin, which is our heartworm product. So we knew that we had something there that we could use to treat worms. So we put a capsule pawpaw in this cleanse product and boy, has this been selling great. Five to 6,000 bottles a month we're selling on this one. I had no idea that so many people had worms. The next slide. So why do we use the twigs? I've already explained that to you because they're the most potent plant part and it allows the tree to survive. About three weeks ago, I gave a talk in Philadelphia to the Plant Conservation Alliance. These are a bunch of tree huggers, man. They were gonna get me. Because, you know, we're going to eradicate this pawpaw species and all this kind of stuff. And I proved to him, hey, by collecting the twigs, we preserve the tree. We're not collecting bark and killing trees and all this kind of stuff. So they were pretty happy when I got done. But notice that there are no leaves on these trees in the background. That's because I was really stupid and we were collecting the stuff in November. And I collected all that material over a ton of material. And, uh, I made a huge extract and sent it off to the Canadian Forest Service for use against that spruce budworm, and it didn't work. Now, what in the world happened? So then I had to go back and do another experiment that took a whole year. That's why they call it research instead of search, okay? Because you have to do it over again <laughs> to repeat it, okay? So the next slide shows us this little dotted line which goes up and comes down again. These are twigs from one tree collected each month over a year. Okay, and the biological activity peaks in the fifth and sixth month. So that's in May and June. So you gotta collect this stuff in May and June. And I collected the other stuff in November. See where it is, 11 out there, see how low it was? No wonder it wasn't any good, see? So you know, people don't understand this. Plants vary in their concentration of their active components. And you gotta pick out the right time. So we've figured this out now. So we collected 110,000 pounds of pawpaw this May and June. 110,000 pounds this year. And we haven't put a dent in the wild populations. 
And as a matter of fact, the collectors are now out there, you know, cutting down the hackberries and the box elders and the other stuff that are competing with pawpaw to grow more pawpaw trees in the wild. The next slide. Now there's another potential variation, and that is the tree-to-tree -tree variation. So I went to Neil Peterson's plantations, and I collected actually 667 twig samples in one day. So I wouldn't have any variation on the day. And we only got through 135 of those because it took one day to assay each sample. But I got through 135 of those samples to see which tree was the most potent. And the difference in biological activity from the worst tree to the best tree was a thousand times. So on the fourth row, the eleventh tree was a real winner. 0 0.03 for the LC50 and the brine shrimp. But the second row, the thirty-second tree, was a loser. 32. The difference between those two biological activities is a thousand times. You wouldn't think that to be that much variation from tree to tree of the same species of plant. But it's genetics. Some trees are really high producers and some trees aren't. So on my 2,000 trees that I got in Vermilion County, Indiana, my plan is to take some buds from number 411 there and graft them onto my rootstocks and I'll grow tops of the trees that are highly biologically active. Okay? So this is what you can do with science. You may find some of Dr. McLaughlin's published work listed at the National Library of Medicine website, www.pubmed.org. Look for entries under the term acetogenin and his name, McLaughlin, comma, JL. Copyright 2008, Richard Lund. All rights reserved.